as part of the lecture series on Buddhism in Myanmar uh, for um, Hong Kong U uh, Center for Buddhist Studies. My first lecture was on meditation in Myanmar, where we looked at uh, meditation within the context of Theravada Buddhism as well as meditation traditions um, in Nyima. This lecture on living traditions of Abhidhamma studies in Nyima uh, to some extent relates to my uh, first lecture uh, because as I mentioned there, uh, meditation and Abhidhamma can be thought of as distinctive features of Buddhism in Nyima and uh, many meditation um, teachers in in um, in Yemma, they draw on um, Abhidhamma as their uh, theoretical foundations for the practice, um, as well as as a descriptive uh, bl blueprint um, to understand their uh, meditation um, experiences. So. In this lecture, we will be uh, exploring Abhidhamma from from the perspective uh, from three perspective. Uh, we but we'll be first. We will look at um, the kind of Abhidhamma texts and types of Abhidhamma texts, as well as how these texts are being um, being transmitted to us. Um, also, we will um, discuss Abhidhamma as a uh, Theravada uh, thought system, meaning that what kind of doctrinal, uh, philosophical, and psychological issues are found in uh, Abhidhamma. And, and then we're going to uh, look at the living tradition of Abhidhamma and Abhidhamma studies in Nyuma. Um, we, we, will, uh, we, we will see um, some important Abhidhamma scholars from uh, Myanmar and, and their con contributions um, and explore how uh, Abhidhamma has uh, come to be uh, known as a, as a distinctive feature or, or cultural feature of uh, Burmese Buddhism. So where do we find uh, Abhidhamma texts? We look at um, the Pali Canon and the Pali Canon has three baskets meaning that uh, the Buddhist teachings are classified and put into three divisions. The first basket, the Vinaya Pitaka, contains uh, not only monastic regulations for monks and nuns but also the context or the events uh, which led to the formalization of these regulation. The second basket, the Sutta Pitaka, contains uh, discourses given by the Buddha. These discourses are also framed uh, within certain context and uh, narrative. Therefore, the teachings um, in the first and um, second baskets are more uh, relatable than those found in the uh, Abhidhamma Pitaka. In the Abhidhamma Pitaka, the teachings are organized uh, systematically, uh, by which I mean, uh, for example, the um, skillful actions um, or unskillful actions, Akusala, um, Akusala Gamma, are categorized and analyzed in, uh, in terms of different types of consciousness and mental factors that are associated with them. Um, it also describes how things are related. Um, so basically, it's talking about uh, causality, and and we might we might use the term conditionality, well, the, the term that I will um, explain a little bit more uh, in detail later in the lecture. And like the first uh, two basket, um, it, the Abhidhamma Pitaka does not contain certain events uh, or contexts within which we could understand uh, the teaching. In this, in this sense, um, i.e. not having the narrative or, or the events as a framework, we might call the teachings um, 
in the abhidhamma pitaka abstract but um, the buddhist tradition believes that the abhidhamma pitaka describe our physical and mental experience experiences in terms of ultimate truth um, as understood in Theravada Buddhism. Um, so in that sense, um, we, we so some Bami um, scholar monks explain that Abhidhamma um, is, uh, the term Abhidhamma can be um, understood as higher teaching because the Abhidhamma Pitaka does not have any narrative or any personality such as you, I, he, she, and so forth, or any uh, antidote. Um, so a way to think about Abhidhamma Pitaka and Abhidhamma as, as a, uh, a thought uh, system is to think of it as a Buddhist analytical philosophy uh, within Theravada Buddhist framework. Um, and I would like to explain uh, key terminology, you know, term, terminology such as analytical and philosophy. Um, it, Abhidhamma, uh, Bhittaka and, and the text, um, the, the, the Abhidhamma text on the whole covers uh, philosophical issues such as uh, causality, uh, metaphysics and ethics. Um, we also find um, psychology. Uh, according to Tirawada understanding and analysis, uh, looking at different types of consciousness and mental factors that are associated with these types of consciousness. Mental factors, uh, which, is, which are called chitta seekers, are, um, they, give, uh, they give emotional tones to um, different types of uh, consciousness and and um, so so when we talk about psychology within uh, Abhidhamma framework it's much more uh, kind of detail and, and, and analy analy analytical or analysis uh, is a very important part of Abhidhamma so you, what we are analyzing um, um, our mind and our body in terms of different um, uh, components and different uh, elements. Um, in addition, Vedama texts uh, they they talk they also talk about uh, Buddhist cosmology and different realms within which uh, living beings can be reborn into. Um, in addition, it also describes um, the path to Nibbana, highlighting different stages of uh, spiritual attainments along the Buddhist path. Um, and Abhidhamma Pitaka has uh, seven volumes or contains seven volumes. Of, and the beginning of the first volume of the Abhidhamma Pitaka has a list of uh, dharmas. Um, this list uh, is called Matika, and the list is like a blue group, uh, like a blueprint uh, for the whole of uh, Abhidhamma Pitaka. Uh, I mentioned uh, the term dharmas, and the dharmas uh, in general can be understood as truth or, or nature, um, and, but here within Abhidhamma framework. The dharmas they refer to the smallest constituents of of the reality. So I mentioned about uh, analysis and how Abhidhamma as a thought system analyzes um, the reality into the smallest constituents um, parts uh, and 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 constituents of the realities, and these are called, called dharmas. Um, the Matika lists these uh, dharmas in terms of um, threes and in terms of twos, so, so triplets and, and duplets. Um, another uh, kind of um, distinctive feature of uh, Abhidhamma is multiple ways of uh, classification of how we experience the world. So meaning that our physical and mental experience is organized uh, and st uh, systematized uh, into different groups and different um, and through uh, many methods. 
and, and these features make uh, abidema uh, um, inaccessible. So, so, so in order to understand abidema as a uh, as a as, as a thought system, um, and also to understand abidema text, uh, one really needs to uh, kind of understand uh, different terminologies. Uh, not only different terminologies, but also different methods that uh, these texts actually are trying to um, trying to present, um, and and there are different patterns. I I will also come back to uh, the the text uh, and how to understand patterns within within the text when I talk about um, the finer text of the Abhidhamma the the, the Patana. Um, and what that means is that uh, until very recently, Abhidhamma, uh, uh, on the whole, um, is is uh, very, is uh, the least studied uh, text uh, within um, uh, Theravada literature. So 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 it's it's uh, um, but this this uh, uh, picture is changing. The seven texts in the Abhidhamma Pitaka, uh, as you can see in the table, um, when we look at the seven, um, seven Abhidhamma texts on the whole, um, there are two uh, approaches that are used. And they are analytical approach and synthesizing approach. Um, the first six texts, so Damasangani, Vipinga, Dadukata, Bokalapanyati, the tower to and um, they, they mainly use the analytical approach in that the reality or our experience is analyzed into dharmas, um, and like I mentioned, um, the, the the dharmas um, cannot be uh, analyzed further because they are the smallest constituent of of the reality. The of the, the the first six texts, uh, the fifth text, the Katawatu, um, is an exception in that it deals with the uh, debates between uh, Theravada school and other early school of Buddhism um, uh, regarding doctrinal issues such as karma and so forth. Um, however, within even within the the Katawatu, um, what is what it's doing is that it's using uh, analytical approach in order to uh, kind of um, deal with the, 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 the debates within different schools of uh, Buddhism. Um, the final text, the uh, Bhattana, uh, deals with conditional relations between the Dharmas, um, describing how um, they are related um, and how each conditions um, other dharmas, how, so so uh, how, that that would condition a relationships between uh, different dharmas and how they are related. I, I would like to emphasize uh, how because it's actually kind of uh, we are looking at uh, the conditioning forces that are um, working in in order to relate. Um, uh, the dharmas together or synthesize the dharmas together. Um, therefore, the, the approach used in the uh, patana is uh, is of synthesis. Um, in terms of dating of the Abhidhamma text, uh, scholars uh, more or less agree that they were formulated and written down um, between 200 BCE and 200 CE. Uh, some of the canonical uh, Abhidhamma texts are quite late. Um, however, it's very difficult to say which parts of the Abhidhamma Pitaka are later additions. Um, nonetheless, Abhidhamma literature um, on the whole continues to be developed um, in um, Theravada countries. Commentaries, sub-commentaries and handbooks on the Abhidhamma um, could be uh, dated to the period um, period between the fifth and the um, 13th century CE. 
um, they were written in, in the Pali language. Um, in addition, uh, we, we have uh, uh, Abhidhamma texts are written uh, that are written in vernacular languages uh, such as Bami's uh, and Thai or, or Shan. Uh, nowadays in, in Burma, there are uh, what I, what I uh, call uh, popular books on Abhidhamma, explaining doctrinal issues uh, and, and points in simple Abhidhamma, uh, in simple uh, uh, kind of uh, Burmese language um, for a general audience. Uh, one thing to note about these uh, popular books on uh, Abhidhamma, uh, the, the doctrinal points that they, they are uh, all trying to uh, convey, uh, they are pretty much more or less the same. Uh, it's just that different authors have uh, come up with different ways of presenting uh, these uh, Abhidhamma doctrinal uh, issues. In the previous slide, we saw how and when the Abhidhamma texts were develop, developed uh, from a, a textual point of view. Um, now, uh, I want to look at um, how Abhidhamma is understood within the uh, tradition. Um, according to the tradition, the Buddha uh, is said to have spent um, seven weeks uh, at the place where he attained uh, his enlightenment um, at Bodh Gaya in um, India. In the fourth week after his enlightenment, he spent a week contemplating on the seven uh, Abhidhamma texts, starting with the Damasingani uh, to the seventh and final text, the Patana. The, pla the place where the Buddha uh, contemplated on the Abhidhamma is called Jewel House, uh, which you can see in the picture. The, Patan, the Patana uh, talks about causality, and I'd like to explain a little bit more about that here, because it's, um, it is regarded as one of the most complex texts. Um, uh, describing the depth of causality from a from um, Theravada Buddhist perspective, the Buddha as the Buddha contemplates on the Patana, his mind is said to have um, imbued with joy and happiness, um, and this in turn makes the uh, makes uh, the Buddha's body clear and translucent. Um, only when he reaches uh, the Patana, uh, according to the tradition, he is said to have found the teaching that matches his perfect wisdom. Um, therefore, it's, it is believed that he emits uh, rays of light uh, to all directions across the universe. Um, and it, it is believed uh, that uh, by uh, Buddhists in Myanmar that you know these rays of light they are still traveling uh, across the universe. Um, in this sense, the Patana symbolizes uh, the Buddha's uh, perfect wisdom, so omniscience, sabhinuta uh, jnana. And so in the um, previous slide, we saw um, the origin of uh, Abhidhamma according to the uh, Buddhist tradition. However, it doesn't um, explain to us uh, where and to whom the Buddha taught Abhidhamma. So, so here, I, I, I would like to look at um, the narrative um, that is found in the commentarial literature, uh, where there is a story about uh, where the Buddha taught the Abhidhamma and how it has been trans transmitted to us. So the, the Buddha went to Dawarisa heaven uh, to teach the Abhidhamma to his mother, uh, birth mother who had been reborn as a god. As a god. Um, and he wanted to repay uh, the mother's debt so he, he taught Abhidhamma uh, in, in the heaven. While he was teaching in heaven, um, he would leave a replica of himself in the heaven and come down to a human realm 
to take a bath and, and have lunch. During that time, uh, in human realm, uh, Venerable Sariputta, uh, the chief disciple well known for uh, his wisdom, uh, attended the Buddha. And the Buddha taught a condensed version of the Abhidhamma to Venerable Sariputta. And then the Venerable Sariputta taught the Abhidhamma to his 500 disciples. And the story goes that the 500 disciples had been bats at the, uh, at the time of previous Buddha. And these bats um, were living in a cave where two monks rehearsed uh, the Abhidhamma. So the, the bats, they heard the Abhidhamma and because of skillful actions, um, they were reborn in heaven. So, so uh, in, in Buddhism, uh, to hear the, the rehearsal of the Dhamma, especially Abhidhamma, is regarded as, um, as a skillful action. So Kusala Karma. And at the time of Gautama Buddha, uh, they, uh, they were, they mean the, 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 the bats or the, the gods, they were reborn as men and became disciple of uh, Venava Sariputta and receive the Abhidhamma teachings. Um, and so there's a strong relationship between Venerable Sariputta and uh, Abhidhamma tradition as well. Before looking at the Abhidhamma as a thought system and uh, what Abhidhamma is about, um, I would uh, like to uh, explain briefly um, uh, how um, uh, Theravada understanding of um, truth and, and, and reality. So in, in Buddhism uh, in general, there are two types of truth, uh, i.e. conventional truth and ultimate truth. Conventional truth uh, refers to concepts, names, labels, uh, etc. Uh, for example, uh, terms such as I, me, my, water, London, um, suffering, even suffering or um, impermanence are conventional names that we use referring to uh, a phenomena or an event or an entity. Um, such concepts and names are uh, different according to specific uh, contexts. Uh, and they can be analyzed further into smaller constituents. Uh, so, so for example, water can be analyzed into H2O, um, down to the particles and uh, atomic level. The ultimate truth, according to Theravada Abhidhamma, uh, refers to basic factors into which uh, all things can be analyzed or resolved. Um, this means that at the ultimate level of reality, there are only dharmas. Um, and these dharmas cannot be analyzed further. And Abhidhamma described what uh, these uh, dharmas are and how they are related to each other, as well as how uh, meditators would experience uh, these dhammas uh, uh, as they practice meditations. And, and when we talk about uh, the ultimate reality or the, the ultimate truth, there are uh, dhammas or things that are conditioned, meaning that they arise because uh, of there are right conditions for them to arise. Um, these conditioned dhammas are subject to uh, um, the law of samsara. Um, but the ultimate goal of, um, uh, of a Buddhist is to attain uh, nibbana, which is not conditioned, meaning that nibbana is not subject to any laws, uh, or to laws of samsara. Uh, it cannot be influenced by any condition. Um, it also means that Abhidhamma does not have any um, characteristic, uh, characteristics of impermanence or suffering, but it does uh, have a characteristic of 
uh, non-self or anatta because one cannot actually identify uh, with oneself you know um, so so uh, sapi dhamma anatta so 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 sapi mean um, all or all, all dhamma uh, including the uh, nibbana and the um, so so you can see here um, in in Tirawara, uh, there are two um, types of truth, but they are not hierarchical. Uh, there's there's no hierarchical difference between the two truths. Both are valid, and we should be able to understand um, and differentiate and recognize them as they are. Uh, conventional conventional truth should be understood as uh, conventional truth and ultimate truth as ultimate truth um, and we should not confuse them or, or uh, think otherwise as well so so we just have to uh, recognize them as they they really are before we look at uh, different types of Dharma um, as described in Abhidhamma um, I would like to um, explain how human beings are analyzed um, and how our psychophysical uh, experience can be understood um, from the perspective of early Buddhist teachings. Um, as you may know, we can analyze a person uh, in terms of five aggregates uh, or components and they are shown in, um, in the table. Um, one thing that I would like to highlight here is the first aggregate uh, form or rupa uh, refers to uh, physical things. Then the remaining four uh, aggregates are mental factors. Uh, so when we think about mind or consciousness uh, in Buddhism, as understood in Buddhism, we can see that uh, uh, consciousness has many um, uh, many factors, um, and and consciousness or mind is not just one uh, one thing, and and abhidhamma is um, abhidhamma goes into in in in, in detail uh, explaining. Uh, different uh, aspects of uh, consciousness um, and and of course this uh, five uh, analysis uh, in terms of uh, analysis of a person in terms of five aggregates concern only uh, the internal uh, our internal world meaning that it does not uh, talk about how we experience the external world or external stimuli um, and and so in order to look at the uh, interaction between our internal world and how our internal world uh, interacts with external stimuli, we look at uh, the twelve or uh, the twelve or eighteen uh, elements, datus, um, and we can look at specifically um, in detail uh, in the. So here we look at how our internal world uh, interacts and experiences uh, external stimuli. The twelve uh, six, uh, the twelve sense bases refer to uh, the six pairs of sense organ and objects. So, for example, in order for us to have an experience through uh, ear, experience of uh, sound through ear. Uh, there should be a sense organ in the in in the ears, our internal base, and sound, uh, the external stimuli, and um, the sound when the sound meets the ear sense base, then there is uh, auditory uh, consciousness, uh, i.e., becoming aware of the sound. So, so here, when we talk about uh, uh, auditory consciousness or visual consciousness, uh, these are just uh, mere uh, awareness of the sound or visual object. 
uh, after this awareness, uh, there are mental processes that would recognize and label the sound uh, or the label uh, the object and that would actually determine uh, whether a sound is pleasant or not pleasant. Uh, so the, as you can see in the table, the 18 elements describe our internal how our internal world relates to external world. Um, in Abhidhamma, these 12 sense spaces uh, and 18 elements are described and, and explained. But the Abhidhamma texts go further than these uh, types of uh, classification. And now we will look at uh, Abhidhamma lists um, in order to the Abhidhamma list that you can see in the um, table is based on 11th, 12th century uh, Abhidhamma text, uh, which is called Abhidhamma Tatsangaha. And this text is very popular in Yama. And um, this is uh, 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 the, the key text that many people study. Um, when, when people in Yama say about, okay, they are studying Abhidhamma, um, they are mainly referring to this, studying this text. Um, it's called Dinjo in, 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 in Burmese. And this text uh, gives an overview list of um, dharmas that we find in um, Theravada Abhidhamma. Um, according to the uh, Abhidhamma Tatsangaha, there are 169 uh, conditioned uh, dharmas and the first group concerns uh, with uh, rupa or form and, and there are 28 types of uh, form. The next two groups are about our mental aspects and um, there are 89 types of consciousness and 52 mental factors that accompany the uh, consciousness. As I said before, um, these uh, 52 mental factors, chitta seekers, give emotional tone um, to consciousness. And you can, as you can see um, on the left, uh, I've listed um, key features um, uh, of um, the dharmas as uh, understood within Theravada Buddhism. Uh, the first one is uh, these dharmas, they arise when there are right, right conditions. So, so for example, uh, we saw in previous slide how uh, uh, our visual consciousness arise. In order for visual consciousness to arise, you have to have a eye uh, base, a sense eye, sense base, a visual object um, and light and transparency. So these are right conditions and when the, the, the conditions are right, uh, visual consciousness will arise. Another important um, feature is these dharmas, they are mutually uh, dependent on each other. Uh, when I when I say mutually dependent means that okay for a consciousness a type of consciousness to arise um, there, there, there has to be other mental factors that are supporting uh, this uh, consciousness to this type of a uh, specific type of consciousness to arise um, and they they are uh, temporary, so, so um, the idea of a nature, so they are constantly arising and falling away, and new ones uh, actually replacing the old. And uh, these dhammas have a characteristic of non-self, suffering and impermanence, so a nature to another, so, so uh, the, the, the three uh, characteristics. Um, of course, the the final dharma, which is uh, unconditioned dharma, uh, nibbana. Nibbana has uh, the characteristic of non-self, but it is free from suffering and it is not impermanent. So it's uh, in, a, in in the sense that it's um, it's there once 
uh, one has attained uh, Nibbana. So I would like to explain a little bit more. Let's look at uh, the character characteristic of mutual dependency in detail. Um, when we talk about mutual dependency in uh, Abhidhamma, uh, we are talking about how, for example, uh, chitta, uh, consciousness, and chitta sika, mental factors, uh, they arise and, and disappear together and how they support uh, each other. Um, and um, I, from now on, I would like to just use the, the terminology, uh, Pali terms, uh, chitta to refer to consciousness and chitta sika to refer to mental factors. And i be using um, uh, rupa uh, to refer to uh, form or body or physical things. Um, so, so a chitta has to be accompanied by at least uh, several uh, universal chitta seekers. Uh, these are no universal uh, chitta seekers because every chitta must have them. And in addition to these seven chitta seekers, um, seven, uh, seven universal chitta seekers, there may be other mental uh, factors, chitta seekers, that uh, are <coughs> that accompany uh, a type of, of chitta. And, and this mutual dependency also uh, occurs uh, between rupa and, and chitta as well, so mind and body. And, and they are also uh, within uh, Abhidhamma, we understand that they are mutually uh, dependent. Um, so let's look at um, what the universal chitta seekers are in a little bit more uh, detail. And we can see in the table each uh, chitta sika has its own function uh, in mental process. One thing to note here is that feeling, uh, perception and intention, uh, which are in the five aggregates, also appear in the list. Their function is uh, the same here as those found in the um, uh, five aggregates. Um, but the Abhidhamma understanding of Buddhist uh, psychologies uh, highlights that attention uh, plays an important role. So manasikara plays an important role in mental processes. Um, so, so when we uh, say when we go shopping in, in, in a supermarket, we may notice certain items or people uh, out of all the items and, and people. Uh, this means that our uh, attention directs the mind to certain objects while uh, not paying attention to other uh, items or other objects. And so, uh, manasikara uh, is is also uh, very important, and manasikara uh, here it, it doesn't uh, at the moment it, it doesn't have any ethical uh, qualifications. So you could have uh, wrong uh, attention, so uh, uh, or you could have uh, right attention, so so um, kind of wise attention. Yoni so manasikara, so so this is about paying attention in the right way or the uh, proper way. Um, these universal chitta seekers, they will also arise with uh, skillful chitta and unskillful chittas. Um, so, so uh, like I said, it's it's there, there's they 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 can accompany uh, uh, they can accompany um, kind of kusala and akusala chitta. And and one thing that I hear is is an, another important thing that I like to draw your attention to is uh, mental life faculties. So, jiwi uh, indriya. The, this chitta sika um, it's kind of like vitalizes the associated mental factors. So so even with the uh, mental aspect. Uh, what is saying is that, that there has to be a, a, a vitality, a kind of life force uh, with the mental aspect. Uh, in Abhidhamma, uh, when we look at uh, Rupa as well, uh, this uh, Jiwa Indriya uh, also 
is present there. So, so both mind and, and um, uh, body has this kind of vitality uh, with, uh, as a characteristic. Um, so I mentioned uh, um, at the beginning of uh, the lecture that Bidama is also concerned with ethics. Um, the chittas uh, and chittasikas are classified in terms of skillfulness, uh, kusala, and unskillfulness, uh, akusala. And of course, there are other ways of classifying the chittas and chittasikas, uh, for example, in terms of vedana. Uh, so a, a chitta um, may have um, wholesome, uh, may have um, rather pleasant, uh, pleasant uh, sensation of feelings uh, or unpleasant uh, sensation of feelings. Uh, some chittas are comically wholesome, meaning that the intention and the karmic results from such chittas are wholesome. Um, the comically wholesome states of uh, consciousness are associated with uh, beautiful uh, chitta seekers. The beautiful chitta seekers are wholesome mental factors uh, such as faith, uh, mindfulness, uh, non greed, non hatred, and so on. And and there are and wholesome chitta seekers. These chitta seekers, such as delusion or hatred, uh, pride, um, and and so forth, they they are associated with and wholesome uh, chittas, um, so and wholesome consciousness. And um, there are also some um, chitta seekers that can be associated with both wholesome and unwholesome uh, chittas depending on the context. So for example, um, ethical qualities, uh, ethical quality of uh, chittasika such as delight uh, or energy, vidya, depends on the context. If we think about uh, someone is meditating and the kind of uh, consciousness that, uh, consciousness is that uh, would arise in this person, uh, in the in the meditator, um, the and the um, co the uh, chitta seekers that are associated with uh, these um, wholesome uh, chitta seekers, they are um, they are they they will be wholesome. So the energy, vidya uh, that arises when. Uh, someone is meditating would be wholesome, so would be skillful. But if we think about someone committing uh, committing uh, a theft, and the kind of wuriya, uh energy that arises with uh, uh, with the consciousness in that person, the the thief, then it would be unwholesome. Um, and there's another type of uh, chitta sikha uh, that uh, I would like to draw your attention to. Uh, these are resultant states of consciousness. Um, it means that uh, some uh, chittas arise as uh, karmic results of, run, um, of uh, our past uh, karma, past uh, previous action. And these are just, just mere resultant uh, states of consciousness. And then there's uh, another type of, uh, of uh, chitta or consciousness. Um, they are called functional states of consciousness. And these functional states, guriya, uh, chittas, they arise in... Um, uh, in in the in the mind of uh, the Buddha and the Arahat, um, they are just uh, you know when a, a Buddha or uh, an Arahat uh, does um, uh, uh, anything, then they are just doing uh, with uh, these kind of mere uh, action, and and it it just it just have functional uh, functional. Um, uh, 
it just have these kind of function. Uh, it doesn't produce any uh, commit results um, in the future. And so what about uh, what about the remaining karma? Um, so um, there are uh, other types of karma or other types of chittas, uh, of uh, chittas that uh, becomes uh, defunct karma uh, do not do not come into uh, fruition, fruition producing karmic results and and they are just kind of horsey karma so the different uh, karma of an arahat and, and so in in this slide what I, I'm trying to show you is that uh, there are different types of um, chittas and chitta seekers depending on ethical quality and um, and of, in the previous slide, what we saw was uh, uh, that different types of chitters and chittasika that are associated associated with uh, mundane level. Um, and here, um, I, I would like to uh, discuss how Abhidhamma describes uh, states of consciousness that. Uh, a meditator would experience along the Buddhist path to liberation, as well as the states of consciousness that are uh, um, uh, that are experienced at uh, supramundane level. So when uh, the practitioners have reached certain level, uh, reached the first stage of liberation, uh, so uh, the uh, string entry they would experience their kusala chitta at the path of string entrance and their corresponding resultant uh, states of uh, consciousness. Um, and um, again, similarly, at different uh, um, at um, uh, the remaining three uh, super, super mundane levels, i.e. once returning, non-returning and arahat, um, the, the uh, practitioner would experience the kusala chitta at the path of um, the the uh, once returning, non returning, and arahatship, and their corresponding uh, resultant state, which it, which uh, is called pala. So the the fruition of uh, different uh, of these uh, four uh, paths. So mega chitta and and pala chitta. Um, and and basically, these uh, there are four kusala chittas at the supramundane level, and they are corresponding uh, resultant states. Um, and these are the uh, final goals of uh, the, the the practitioner. So when we talk about um, uh, meditation and uh, the path and and the realization of spiritual attainments. Um, in the context of uh, Theravada Abhidhamma, we are uh, talking about how a practitioner would attain uh, these supramundane uh, uh, kusala chittas and uh, their corresponding uh, resultant uh, um, chittas, so mega and pala uh, chittas. So this. This um, so far we have kind of looked at how um, different types of uh, chittas and chittasika within the the, the Abhidhamma framework. Now I would like to uh, move on to explaining uh, a little bit more about um, analyze uh, about uh, synthesizing the uh, different uh, types of dharmas uh, that we 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 saw. Um, in the first part of the lecture. So as I mentioned um, uh, at the beginning, the, the Patana, the final uh, and final text of the Abhidhamma Pitaka is, uh, uh, is about uh, synthesizing uh, and bringing all the different uh, dharmas together in um, and how they are related. Um, so, so he, here, uh, one thing that I like to highlight here uh, is 
um, when we talk about uh, the dharmas that are kind of synthesized in the patana, we are talking about 170 dharmas. So 169 conditioned dharmas and, and one unconditioned dharmas. Uh, the the um, um, the uh, one unconditioned dharma is, is being uh, nibbana. So, and, and of course, this is uh, we draw on the text uh, Abhidhamma Sangaha, which we saw uh, in our previous slides, and 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 the patan uh, the patana explain how these dharmas are related. Um, and there, there are 24 conditioning forces, um, uh, which you can see uh, um, uh, here representing uh, sand, and how they are related through these conditioning forces or conditions. So, Patana, essentially, on the whole, there are five volumes in, in Abhidhamma Bhidaka, but if we can actually try to understand patana in terms of uh, uh, cause and effect, what is simply doing is uh, okay. You have a set of conditioning dharma, uh, which I kind of represented here as X, and X can be any of the 170 dharmas, and conditioned dharma, uh, 169 conditioned dharma and how they, these X and Y are related through Z, so 24 conditioning forces. So if you like, conditioning dharma can be understood as cause, and conditioned dharma can be understood as uh, effect. And uh, basically, it's, uh, uh, the, patan is, well, the patana is about how X and Y are related through Z, so any of the uh, 24 conditions. So this is the basically uh, what uh, uh, you know. In in essence, uh, the patana can be analy analyzed or summarized in that way. Of course, um, nibbana and conditioned dharma uh, cannot cannot be um, in in uh, conditioned dharma because it's an condition. So it, it doesn't have any uh, con condition. It cannot be an, uh, influenced by any other dharmas. And so that's why um, in Y, you only have 169 conditioned dharma, not the nibbana. Um, of course, the patana um, is a little bit more com com complex than that because uh, what I've just explained is cause and effects and, and how they are related. But in the Patana, one, uh, one um, a kind of a distinctive feature of the Patana is we are not just talking about, uh, you know, uh, one group of dharmas and, and how that is related to another group of dharma. We are also talking about combination of how these dharmas can be combined uh, using uh, different uh, patterns and different ways of combine, combining these dharmas. And the conditions, the 24 condition or condition forces, they can also um, be combined in different ways. And, and how multiple conditions can actually influence different groups of dharmas. So uh, the, um, the, the patana it actually is much more com complex, but the main idea is about how cause and effect and, and how they are related. I, I like to emphasize here uh, the how. Because um, if we look at Pateja uh, Samokpana, dependent origination, it only talks about uh, cause and effect, and it doesn't really explain uh, how uh, cause and effect are related. But in the Patana, we find that um, conditioning force. So th these, uh, um, so far, we, we kind of looked at uh, what Abhidhamma is and the origin of uh, Abhidhamma and um, analytical 
elements as well as uh, synthesizing elements. Um, now we um, we're going to look at uh, Abhidhamma within the framework of um, Burmese Buddhism, and um, here, uh, so we are now looking at the living. Uh, uh, expressions of uh, Abhidhamma uh, in, in Yama and within Burmese Buddhism. And the, uh, the chart that you, you can see on the slide actually uh, kind of uh, summarize, summarizes uh, what's going on in terms of Abhidhamma culture in, in Yama. So the first column, in the first column, what we have is uh, uh, Buddhist beliefs. And I mentioned that Abhidhamma uh, uh, is actually understood uh, by the tradition as embodiment of the Buddha's uh, only science, so Sabinu Danyana, and specifically the, the Patana, uh, the last and final text of the uh, Abhidhamma Bhidaka is understood as, uh, as an embodiment of the Buddha's uh, perfect wisdom. And not only that, the tradition also believes that uh, uh, the Abhidhamma, especially the Bhutana, um, is the great defense uh, of the Buddha Sasana. Because uh, one of the uh, commentary or narratives that we find is um, the Buddha Sasana will decline and, 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 and disappear at one point and they, the decline of the Sasana begins with uh, disappearance of the Patana. So uh, the belief is that if you can preserve uh, the Patana and Abhidhamma, you are actually preserving um, the Buddha Sasana. So, so these uh, um, uh, beliefs they are very important and they are in if you like in the psyche of uh, Buddhists in in Myanmar and then the second column actually sh uh, show um, uh, socio-political factors um, that uh, comes into, uh, into into play so the first uh, the second box that you you see um, in Myanmar um, we have seen that you know that there, 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 there is uh, there has been uh, um, and still is strong literary traditions uh, of Buddhist studies in, in, in throughout Burmese history, um, starting from um, say the study of Pali languages, uh, language and the Pali canon um, in the Bagan period or even earlier than that. Um, and the, the increased studies of Abhidhamma, at least from the uh, 16th, or 16th and 17th century onwards. So the, what we find is that in terms of Abhidhamma studies, uh, the, the, uh, the kind of, uh, the number of uh, Abhidhamma texts that, that um, were produced um, from the um, 16th century onwards uh, is actually increasing. Um, people nowadays, they are also still continue to write uh, Abhidhamma uh, texts and, and books. The second, uh, uh, the third box is actually thinking about um, how um, socio-political factors um, in terms of uh, threats uh, or danger. Uh, it can be real or imagined. Um, external threats uh, such as uh, the British um, in the early 19th century uh, and uh, the internal uh, threat could be uh, any controversial uh, Buddhist uh, teaching by various groups within uh, Myanmar um, or natural threats. Um, such as cyclone and, and so forth, or famine, um, or supernatural threats such as angry spirits and dark magic and so forth. So these kind of dangers, um, and, and if you combine the belief with uh, the Buddhist belief uh, that Abhidhamma is an embodiment of the, uh, the Buddha wisdom, then what you have is this kind of uh, um, the use of Abhidhamma in order to protect 
uh, oneself and others uh, from these kind of dangers. So, so you, you know, abidama um, uh, is used in apotropaic uh, practices um, and, and daily objects and, and so forth. Of course, uh, if we then look at um, uh, kind of uh, political factors such as uh, nationalism, um, then you know, uh, Abhidhamma becomes a uh, differentiating or distinctive feature of Bami's uh, Thiravada Buddhism. And, 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 and Buddhists in Myanmar, they are also aware of that and they are very proud of that as well. And, um, and it becomes part of their, their um, uh, Bahamese Buddhist identity as well. So, so if you then combine Buddhist belief and these uh, socio-political factors, the outcome is that uh, in, in Myanmar, we have uh, Abhidhamma culture or uh, omnipresent of uh, Abhidhamma uh, within the population. Um, so one of, one of the things is that uh, both monks and nuns, uh, as well as lay people, they study Abhidhamma. Uh, there are Abhidhamma examinations, uh, oral examination and written examination, and people are eager to sit these examinations. And then um, uh, transformation of study uh, on uh, Abhidhamma uh, or Buddhist texts, by which I mean that um, the um, it, when we look at um, monastic education and Buddhist education uh, on the whole, uh, we see that uh, Abhidhamma actually Abhidhamma influence influences these uh, studies. Uh, Buddhist studies um, in Myanmar and any kind of uh, textual interpretation uh, or anything like that uh, may well be interpreted through the lens of Abhidhamma um, and, and of course uh, grammar is also important. I'm, I'm not uh, ruling out the importance of grammar in monastic education but Abhidhamma also plays a, a very important role. Another important uh, relationship between Abhidhamma uh, and meditation, uh, and I, I mentioned it um, previously as well as uh, previous, in my previous lecture and as well as at the beginning of this lecture as well. Another uh, feature that we find uh, in, in, in Myanmar is Abhidhamma is also used or drawn on um, uh, when we, uh, when, when we kind of uh, are explaining about uh, uh, medicine, uh, so, so indigenous um, medicine and knowledge um, is kind of embedded within uh, Abhidhamma framework. And uh, Abhidhamma also um, is, is used in protective practices, daily objects and, and so forth. So these are uh, what I call outcomes. Of course, they, there's also another kind of reinforcing uh, forces that are being kind of uh, creating this loop um, and, 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 you know, sermons and demands talk, talk given by monks and lay uh, literati. Um, they draw a, a, on Abhidhamma. Uh, memorization and, and, and um, recitation of Abhidhamma, um, um, you know, whether individually or as a group, uh, is very, they are also very popular. And also uh, the belief that, uh, you know, devas or gods are, are being very helpful if you recite uh, Abhidhamma or the Bhattana. And, and these are reinforcing Forces, which actually strengthening the belief in uh, in Abhidhamma as the embodiment of the uh, of the Buddha's wisdom and the great defense uh, of Buddha Sasana, and then it goes around again. So uh, these are ongoing processes that's happening uh, and creating Abhidhamma culture in in Myanmar. Before we look at Pacific Abhidhamma scholars uh, in Myanmar and their contribution, um, I would like to give, give an, an overview of Abhidhamma 
uh, text composed in in Myanmar. Venerable mm -hmm. uh, Wisuta Bigumsa uh, and other senior monks they compile a list of Abhidhamman texts uh, consisting uh, three hundred and thirty three texts. Uh, this list uh, is not a comprehensive one um, because, as I mentioned before, um, the composition and, and production of Abhidhamma texts um, are, um, is, is still ongoing in Myanmar to the present day. Um, and some of the, the, the texts uh, that we find in the list uh, given by Venor Wizuda and others um, some of them date back to uh, Bagan period um, and in terms of the languages that we find in this volume of uh, Abhidhamma literature you know the Pali language um, and, and the Bamis as well as a, a mixture of Pali and Bamis uh, translations so these kind of uh, 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 Nixia, um, that, that some of the text uh, actually falls into Nixia genre uh, where you find uh, a kind of translation. Um, one, I would like to here, I would like to highlight two features of um, this volume of, of literature. Uh, the first one is that whenever we think about Abhidhamma uh, literature uh, in Myanmar, um, we have to keep in mind that uh, these texts, uh, they, they, uh, and and the, the authors who compose these these texts, they draw on um, uh, what I call a bit of commentary or traditions, meaning that um, is the when when they compose these texts, they, you know they uh, they draw on uh, atakta and and then. And, and so forth. Um, so the commentary, uh, uh, the knowledge from commentary or traditions actually comes through. For example, uh, the the first uh, the text uh, which is um, I've shown in um, in in the picture, uh, the the book with the yellow cover, is about Batana Yagat, and that th this this is uh, about the Batana text. But analyzing the patana in 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 terms of or analyzing the conditional relations that the patana talks about in terms of four ultimate realities, so chitta, chittasika, rupa, uh, and and nibbana, and and this kind of classification, as we've seen before, actually comes from um, the Abhidhamma Tathagata. So what we find is that. Um, different layers of um, commentary or traditions actually inform these uh, texts. Um, that's that's one 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 thing to bear in mind. Uh, the next one is some of the uh, the Abhidhamman texts that we find um, in in contemporary in contemporary period. Um, they they are very much uh, focused on. Um, Protective practices and and the the power that abhidhamma uh, or the recitation of abhidhamma can and can bring. So, for example, uh, the final book uh, with the um, blue cover is about the power of um, the patana that one can uh, one can gain and one can invoke uh, by reciting the patana and and how. Uh, one might be able to uh, bring um, luck or bring fortune, fortune and, and 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 prevent any danger. You know that kind of uh, 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 narrative and and accounts. They are very popular. So so um, we we find you know very much kind of um, if you like we can think of it as a, a spectrum of. Um, um, literature where uh, on the one hand you what you might find is very kind of uh, scholarly work and and very complex idea and philosophical ideas and analysis and on the other hand and uh, we also find uh, narratives and accounts and and accounts of um, you know people's life and how Abhidhamma actually Abhidhamma informs um, their life and and so forth so it's 
is a, a, a rich range of literature. Um, and now what now I would like to move on to looking at Pacific Pitama scholars and their contributions um, in, in Myanmar um, and, and beyond Myanmar. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture that Bami's uh, meditation masters draw on Abhidhamma as a theoretical framework for their practice. And here uh, we, we will see how the founding fathers of uh, uh, Bami's uh, Vipassana movement, uh, which has come to, come to be, uh, or which has given rise to uh, a global mindfulness movement, have um, contributed um, to and uh, to Abhidhamma studies in Myanmar and, um, their, and their impact um, in, in Myanmar as well as um, in other countries. The first figure that I'd like to uh, discuss is uh, Lady Siado. Uh, Lady Siado um, was a very well-known writer producing over a um, uh, hundred texts on a right wing range of topics uh, such as uh, Theravada doctrines and cosmology, meditation and Abhidhamma. Um, you know, when when he talks about meditation, he, he, he will go into um, in great detail about uh, the four foundation of mindfulness or, um, you know, specifically looking at different elements of meditation in, in, his, uh, in his writing. Um, and also he, he wrote uh, many um, um, texts on Abhidhamma as well. And um, and and he's uh, well known for popularizing and encouraging lay people to study uh, Abhidhamma uh, and and to practice uh, vipassana meditation. Um, within and we, we we should bear in mind that uh, he 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 was also uh, a, a kind of uh, a national figure uh, in that um, when he encouraged. Uh, lay people to study Abhidhamma and practice uh, Vipassana meditation. He was um, doing it within the context of um, uh, the British, uh, British, British colony and, and, and rule and using uh, Abhidhamma as a, as a way of, of mind, uh, mental culture that, can, uh, that would allow uh, the Burmese to uh, uh, um, if you like, counteract any uh, Western knowledge and, and, and so forth. So it was uh, within that context. The next um, uh, scholar amongst that also very important within uh, Bami's Vipassana movement is the Mula, uh, Mula Mingon uh, Seado, Venue uh, Narada, and, and, and he, he was also uh, a very uh, learned monk and he wrote um, uh, many texts as well. And he, he was one of the teachers of, of uh, Mahasi Siado, so a well-known uh, meditation teacher. And, and you know, our, uh, when uh, Bami's uh, Vipassana tradition. When when we talk about uh, the, the origins of um, our Vipassana movement in Nima, uh, uh, these two uh, monks they are very important. And and um, also Mula Mingo um, also kind of um, encourage people, lay people to 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 study Abhidhamma and and practice meditation. And one thing that I like to highlight here is that um, although Abhidhamma, uh, Abhidhamma studies and meditation became very popular uh, in Myanmar, um, and also, you know, to some extent, uh, meditation, uh, Vipassana meditation in particular, uh, became uh, a, a global uh, phenomena, uh, even, you know, uh, in, the, in the 50s and 60s. Uh, so it, it was uh, becoming very popular. But uh, when we look at uh, meditation and, and then Abhidhamma, um, 
the global uh, spread of a beta mass studies um, is is um, rather slow or has been rather slow, um, although it's changing at the moment because of various uh, um, meditation groups in 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 uh, in Europe and and in other countries. They become they have become very much interested in abhidharma uh, because of um, meditation teachers such as um, Pa Al Siado and 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 the the, the tradition. Um, that uh, other uh, Bami meditation traditions as well. So it it's just that um, there's there's been kind of slow transmission of Bidama study uh, glo globally. Uh, the, the picture is changing, um, and um, so these two uh, Abhidhamma uh, scholar monks they 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 were very much kind of. Um, important in promoting Bidama study in, in Yuma. Um, and, and the next uh, figure that I would like to uh, focus on is um, CIG Uo. Um, CIG Uo uh, was a contemporary with Lady Seattle. Uh, he studied and taught Abhidhamma in Mandalay. Uh, Mandalay was, uh, was one of the centers of uh, uh, monastic education um, in in the um, early in in the early twentieth century and nineteenth century, you know, um, and but he disrobed uh, in um, eighteen eighty six, uh, so one year after uh, the British uh, took over uh, took over Burma, and. Um, and then he started teaching uh, Abhidhamma uh, again in 1905 in Amarapura, uh, very near near, near uh, Mandalay, uh, and uh, he attracted uh, so many uh, monastic and lay students. Um, he was well known for uh, what has come to be known as night class, uh, night class, or, or Nyawa in Bami's on uh, four Abhidhamma, uh, Abhidhamma texts. Uh, the four Abhidhamma texts that are the focus of, of, of the night class Nyawa are the Matika, uh, Dadukata, the Yamaka, and the Patana. These classes uh, on these texts um, are, are called night class because uh, they are taught at night. Um, the method uh, of teaching and learning um, of these Abhidhamma texts draw on um, the Abhidhamma literature known as Ayaga. So, so we've seen uh, the Patana Ayaga. Uh, the Ayaga um, are texts that are similar to Pali Bami's Nixia, um, but in the Ayaga, the semantic meaning is omitted. Um, the Ayaga uh, explain or explicate the text in terms of the four ultimate realities, um, the dharmas, and um, so what what they are trying to do is they are trying to understand the canonical uh, abhidharma text within the abhidharma uh, system of thought and concepts that uh, that that have developed um, in the tradition. Um, so um, Siyadi Uong, like um, other meditation uh, Abhidhamma teachers in Myanmar, is well known for his teaching uh, and explanation of these uh, canonical Abhidhamma texts through the lens of um, commentary or tradition. Um, and then the, the, the next person that I would like to focus on is um, um, so, so uh, if you like, um, uh, Lady Seattle and and Siaji Uong and and you know Mulan Mingo Seattle, they 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 have this kind of uh, traditional um, monastic education training. Um, that the the next two um, Bami uh, scholars that I would like to um, talk about here, um, they they are um, 
they, they their education background is uh, is slightly different from um, that of um, Lady Seattle, for example, or Mula Mingon Seattle, um, and and Siaji Um So the the first um, lay person, uh, lay scholar that I would like to um, focus on is Upi Mountain. Um, um, Upi Mountain, uh, um, you know, was educated um, as a, um, you know local um, local high school, um, and he, he attended um, Rangoon College, um, and uh, and he he got a BA and MA in Pali. Um, he went to the UK and studied at Exeter College in in, in Oxford, and he attained uh, B Lit there. And then he was at uh, um, School of Oriental Studies, um, and in 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 a temple in London um, uh, as well. So you know, and then he be became a professor of Pali study in in um, in University of Yangon. And um, he he was uh, so if you like you know he he was uh, initially trained uh, trained in in um, in kind of uh, local high school and then he became uh, his education um, kind of expanded. Um, he was interested in linguistic history, uh, Tidawada studies, and inscription. So, so uh, he was a, a kind of a polymath, and and he widely uh, engaged in scholarly debates and writing and so forth. Um, so, one of uh, one of the uh, kind of highlights of um, uh, in relation to Abhidhamma uh, studies um, is that um, he. Um, he translated um, the uh, Atasalini, so so uh, the Bodhagosa commentary on the Damasingani, uh, the first book of Abhidhamma uh, Bhittaka, and that was published by um, um, Oxford University Press um, uh, for the Pali Text Society. And then he also translated um, a, a very uh, important text uh, on meditation, uh, uh, Wizardy Maga, so the path of, of purity, um, uh, and and that was also again uh, published uh, uh, by uh, OUP for um, Pali Text Society. Um, and one thing that I like to highlight here is he was very. Um, uh, kind of uh, keen on um, making the the uh, Burmese language more accessible and and kind of more accessible in the sense that as a as a uh, as a language for uh, for scholarly work academic work so so he was an advocate of the use of the Burmese language um, and and the study of the, the Burmese language and literature um, and and within you know within the context of uh, uh, university education, so higher education. Um, the next, so here we look at um, Seji Ushuiza and, and his contribution um, to Abhidhamma studies in, in Myanmar and beyond. Um, similar to Seji Upi Mountain, uh, Seji Ushuiza had um, traditional um, educational uh, training. Um, and also uh, university education uh, as well. So uh, both Siaji Upi Mountain and Ushui Sa'ao, they um, drew on um, their knowledge uh, of Buddhist teachings and doctrines and Abhidhamma as well as um, uh, modern uh, knowledge system um, and trying to, uh, trying to bring um, both of them together in their work. Um, so, for example, um, in in the um, the article on the Buddhist philosophy of the real, Siati uh, Ushui Zhao drew on uh, Buddhist doctrines and and texts, uh, as well as uh, international philosophers such as uh, Russell, um, to explore the concept of what it, what the real is. Um, in the next uh, article that uh, he published. 
Buddhism and, and science. He relates how um, Buddhist thoughts and teachings can be understood uh, as a scientific system in the sense that the methodological logic that is used in the Buddhist text uh, um, uh, text and including the comment uh, commentary literature uh, can be understood as a, as a uh, scientific system. Um, uh, he tries to synthesize Buddhist teaching and practices uh, and uh, modern categories of um, science um, uh, such as uh, physics, uh, geology and chemistry and so forth. And, um, and in not only that, he um, um, he, uh, he, he drew on uh, his knowledge of Abhidhamma, specifically the mental processes and, and the, the, uh, the Patana as well, um, to, to explore, um, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, what, what um, these texts have to say about uh, the modern, uh, modern scientific uh, knowledge and, and so forth. Um, um, Siaji Ushizao also serve, uh, as, served as as an interpreter between Lady Seattle and, and Mrs. Rhys Davis um, uh, of the Polytech Society for many years um, and, and translating her questions uh, on Abhidhamma text uh, for uh, the Lady Seattle and the Lady Seattle would reply and, and, uh, and Siaji, again, Siaji Ushiza uh, would um, translate and, and uh, translate for Mrs. Rhys Davis as well. Um, and another key contribution that uh, Siaji Ushiza uh, uh, made was he published, uh, he translated the Abhidhamma Tap Sangaha and published uh, that translation uh, by uh, Polytech Society. And um, in, in, in that sense, Siaji Upimande and Siaji Ushiza are made uh, Abhidhamma accessible uh, to the global audience. Um, now let's, let's look at um, In previous slides, uh, we saw how Abhidhamma scholars have um, uh, composed and written uh, Abhidhamma texts and uh, contributed to uh, Abhidhamma studies in Nyuma. Uh, now I want to focus on uh, the living expression of Abhidhamma studies in Nyuma. Um, before we look at uh, Abhidhamma examination uh, that um, you know, people, uh, monks and nuns, as well as, as, well as lay people, um, uh, do or, or undertake. Um, I, I, I would like to explain that um, when we look at monastic education and the, the curriculum on the whole, uh, we can see that, uh, that uh, in the curriculum, uh, there's a strong presence of uh, Abhidhamma studies uh, in monastic education. Um, so so uh, the, the texts such as uh, the Matika, Dadukata, um, 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 the Patana, uh, the Yamaka, uh, these are all um, in, in, the, in the curriculum. Um, and we saw that with when we were looking at uh, Siati Uo's teaching. Um, so these are still being kind of, these texts are still being uh, studied. Uh, by uh, monks and nuns and those who uh, lay people who sit these examination. In addition to that, um, government sponsor uh, monastic education and, and curriculums uh, in uh, monastic cur curriculum, uh, there are um, Abhidhamma associations uh, led by uh, lay people. So, so these are private. Uh, Abhidhamma associations um, that you find in in Yango, in Mandalay, and 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 any other uh, uh, towns and cities. Um, this one, uh, I would like to focus on the Abhidhamma Propagation uh, Association that we find in in Yango. And this association um, has been holding uh, Abhidhamma uh, examination, both oral and written uh, examination. Uh, on on 
there are seven volumes of uh, Peter Mukhtaka, and uh, people uh, can uh, can can kind of sit uh, oral examinations as well as written examination on these texts. And, and you, as you can uh, see here, monks, nuns, uh, lay people uh, uh, throughout uh, Myanmar, they, 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 they come and sit for the, these examinations. And, and uh, so what, what you do is that um, uh, in order to participate in that uh, examination, yeah, you, you, you would um, go to Abhidhamma classes, um, they they offer you know Vedama uh, classes on on the Matika the Datukata uh, the, the Katavatu and and so forth all the seven texts of Vedama uh, and for our examination um, you also have a specific uh, page numbers and how you can memorize and and sit for specific texts and 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 recite in front of a, a examiner so you can see here in the picture uh, the first um, uh, the one above is uh, me actually doing the uh, examination uh, so I think I was reciting um, the Madhika uh, the list um, of the Dharmas that we saw um, when we were looking at the Patana so the, so the 266 Dharmas and, and so memorizing that and, and reciting for the oral examination. Um, and then once you have finished the oral examination, you can then sit for written examination. And, and you can go through the, you know, the, the whole uh, Abhidhamma Pitaka. So every year they hold that, um, except last year when there was a pandemic so so in, in you know we are still in, in in the middle of a pandemic so so uh, they, they 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 couldn't hold uh, a bit of my examination uh, um, and then let's look at uh, the kind of um, uh, abidema is uh, uh, how abidema is used uh, as a uh, as protective uh, practices um, so the, here uh, in the slide i I'm just showing you uh, how the patana uh, is used as the protective practices. So um, you can see, uh, you know, it, like I mentioned before, you know, daily objects and and the the uh, Nima National Airlines uh, logo is actually representing um, 24 conditions uh, that we we find in the patana. Um, so this is a very popular uh, logo in 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 Myanmar, uh, not just uh, not just uh, as uh, Myanmar National Airlines logo, but you know you 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 will see that uh, on on um, uh, on books and 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 so forth. Um, uh, the the uh, the kind of the next um, uh, image uh, is showing the 24 conditions uh, 24 bhajayas in in the format of um, the uh, stupa so so uh, 24 conditions actually written out um, I'm in the picture what you can see is only the half there's a there's a uh, uh, the the bottom half of it as well um, again it's is for protective practices um on on the on the right what you see is the uh, the the naga or the uh, the the, uh, the serpents uh, and how the the 24 uh pajayas being kind of uh, uh written out and how um, there's an instruction that comes with with this diagram of um the the, the patana uh in in the shape of the naga um, and how to uh, recite and how to uh, how to do the recitation of the, that so so it's um, it's all part of uh, protected practices so to protect uh, oneself from danger and to bring uh, luck or fortune um, so so the, uh, people in Myanmar they, they 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 believe in in these practices and they 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 uh, invoke uh, the, the the power of the uh, the patana um, and 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 
katana recitation uh, uh, and chanting is very popular. So finally, what I'd like to um, kind of conclude and, and highlight is that, as we have seen in this lecture, um, uh, Abhidhamma on the whole uh, is, is very important uh, um, in in Nyama and, and for Burmese Buddhism and, and for Burmese Buddhists. Um, it, Abhidhamma, uh, if we think about um, in, in the context of Theravada Buddhism, is a distinctive feature um, in that it's, uh, um, you know, in, in this lecture, I only talked about uh, uh, Abhidhamma uh, in the context of um, uh, Burmese Buddhism. But we also find uh, the the presence of Abhidhamma in other countries such as uh, Thailand and, um, and 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 so forth. Um, in you know, and not just in not just in, in in Thailand, for example, Abhidhamma is important as a uh, funeral uh, ritual. You know, recitation of Abhidhamma uh, as is part of uh, uh, funeral ritual in in Thailand. Um, we can also say that uh, Bidama is is more than a philosophy. So we've seen how uh, Bidama incorporates and and uh, incorporates uh, other um, uh, elements uh, such as um, ethics, um, not only ethics, um, you know, cosmology, uh, meditation practices, uh, meditation. Uh, spiritual attainments and and so forth, um, psychology as well, um, and um, in addition, Abhidhamma provides a uh, reference for a sociological goal, uh, especially in in modern Burmese vipassana traditions. Um, when I when I uh, you know I, when I say reference for sociological logical goals. Abhidhamma, in, to some extent, has uh, two functions in relation to uh, uh, meditation practices. The first one is that it uh, it kind of provides a, a, a blue, blueprint um, for kind of a prescriptive uh, kind of way, so, so you, uh, what one should do in, in one's practice. So providing as a theoretical frame, uh, framework or background. And then Abhidhamma also can provide uh, uh, descriptive uh, guidance. So, so one might uh, try to, to uh, check one's meditat uh, meditative experiences um, uh, against uh, Abhidhamma, uh, what, uh, what Abhidhamma says about uh, certain uh, spiritual attainments and so forth. Um, so this kind of uh, detailed analysis, we can find it in 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 the Wisdom Mega, uh, and you know the text that uh, Siaji Pema did uh, translated uh, into English. Um, Abhidhamma also incorporates development in in the understanding of the world in both ancient and and modern times. Um, so so. Um, uh, I mentioned very brief, briefly when I was explaining about the patana, how uh, did, uh, the patana relates to uh, uh, and talks about uh, different combinations of dhammas and, and different combination of uh, 24 uh, patayas, 24 conditions. And um, the way the patana does this is through uh, mathematical combinations and set theories. Um, in order to explore um, uh, the depth of causality. Um, another uh, element is that uh, we've seen how Abhidhamma scholars in, in Nyama, uh, they try to uh, align and, and perhaps appropriate uh, Western scientific knowledge with existing uh, Burmese uh, knowledge system in, in the 19th century. So when I say, uh, when, when we say uh, Burmese uh, knowledge system, um, we, we are uh, talking about um, Buddhist uh, knowledge and, uh, and how Abhidhamma uh, is part of that uh, knowledge system. So, so uh, you, we can see that uh, it's Abhidhamma is uh, is a very uh, is is very much alive, and is there are uh, different um, uh, 
living expression of Epitema in, 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 in Myanmar. And I've given you a uh, selected uh, bibliography here um, and um, more, I mean, if you want to uh, if you want to um, explore a little bit more about a uh, specific uh, aspect of of the uh, what I've mentioned in this lecture, uh, you might want to um, look at um, uh, my thesis as well. So, so um, in in my thesis, I also mention a PhD thesis. I also mention uh, a range of how Abhidhamma plays a role in Burmese Buddhism. Um, so, thank you very much.